entirely new ocean could emerge in the African continent. In 2005, the Earth didn't just quake, it tore itself open. The rift is several miles long, and some believe it is a sign the continent is splitting in two. A 60-kilometer-long scar split the land in Ethiopia. Magma surged from the Earth's core, and it began creating a brand new ocean, forming right before our eyes. But the deeper researchers looked, the stranger it got. Alien chemistry boiling under the desert, magnetic pulses rising from the core, and life evolving in real time. The week the Earth tore open. In September 2005, the Afar Depression in Ethiopia experienced something so dramatic that geologists still call it one of the most important geological events ever witnessed by humans. Within a single week, the ground shook more than 130 times. These weren't random tremors. Each quake was a warning from the deep, messages rising from a restless mantle that was pushing the African continent apart. People living in the region described the ground as breathing, swelling and cracking as if the earth itself had come alive beneath their feet. Then, on September 26th, the Dabahu volcano erupted. But it wasn't a typical eruption. Instead of a towering ash column, the land simply split open. A giant fissure tore across the desert, more than 60 kilometers long, and in some places, as wide as a football field. According to a landmark study published in Nature, this rift formed in just 10 days, a process that normally takes hundreds or even thousands of years. One scientist at Oxford University said observing it felt like watching a mid-ocean ridge grow on land. And that's the part that shocked scientists most. This was not just a volcanic eruption. It was ocean creation behavior happening in real time. Satellite images from NASA showed magma surging upward to fill the fresh tear in the crust, exactly the same mechanism that builds new ocean floors beneath the Atlantic and Indian Oceans today. But this was happening under the feet of local communities, not thousands of meters below the sea. Afar sits on a geological crossroads where three tectonic plates, the Nubian, Somali, and Arabian plates, are all pulling away from each other. This triple junction is one of the only places on Earth where scientists can literally watch continents breaking apart. Some geophysicists believe a massive superplume of hot mantle rock lies beneath the region, acting like a blowtorch that weakens the crust and accelerates the rifting. Others suggest the fracture pattern resembles the early stages of the Red Sea's creation 25 million years ago. A fascinating theory even proposes that East Africa is replaying an ancient script, a breakup sequence similar to the one that split Pangaea 200 million years ago. The Afar Depression, geologists say, might one day be remembered as the birthplace of a new ocean, the first ocean humans have ever watched form from land. The strange chemistry of a future ocean, alien life zones in the making. As the Afar Depression continues to widen and magma rises to fill the deep cracks, something strange is happening beneath the surface. Chemical reactions not typical of most continental regions, Geologists studying the Danakil and Turkana basins have discovered extremely high concentrations of sulfuric acid, iron compounds, and even rare extremophile bacteria, organisms that usually only thrive in hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean. These findings, documented by the European Space Agency and research from the Max Planck Institute, suggest that the East African Rift is already developing characteristics more similar to an ocean floor than a landmass. In places like Dalal, Ethiopia, a site within the Afar Triangle, temperatures regularly exceed 100 degrees Celsius, and the colorful acid pools there have been described as the most chemically hostile environments on Earth. Yet somehow, early forms of microbial life persist. These organisms survive in extreme acidity and high salinity, indicating that when this region eventually floods and forms a new ocean, it may host exotic ecosystems, unlike any seen in today's seas. Some biologists even speculate this could mirror the conditions of early Earth oceans or potential environments on moons like Europa or Enceladus. Adding to the mystery, satellite spectrometry has picked up odd magnetic anomalies near rift volcanoes like Erta Ale and Nabro. These anomalies suggest deep metallic intrusions or rare mineral deposits rising with the magma, possibly cobalt, lithium, and even traces of rare earth metals. If confirmed, the rift zone may not only give birth to an ocean, but also become a future economic frontier, rich in resources critical for electronics, batteries, and clean energy tech. Yet there's an eerie irony. The exact same geothermal activity that might make the rift valuable is also what makes it deadly. 
the groundwater near these volcanic zones is highly corrosive. In 2016, a research team from the University of Bologna recorded instant metal corrosion and lens damage within minutes of exposure to the Dalal pools. One researcher even described the site as Earth's closest approximation to hell. The Afar region is not just splitting, it's transforming into something utterly alien. As it sinks lower and seawater eventually rushes in, this strange chemistry may seed a bizarre new marine world. If life survives here now, what might it become in the ocean of tomorrow? The Rift's ancient secret. Is this where humanity began for a reason? Long before scientists realized the East African Rift might one day become a new ocean, they were already obsessed with this region for a different reason. It's the cradle of humankind. Fossil evidence from Ethiopia's Afar Triangle, the exact same area now tearing open, includes some of the oldest known hominin remains ever discovered, the most famous. Lucy, the 3.2 million-year-old Australopithecus afarensis, discovered in 1974 near Hadar. Her bones changed everything, and that's not all. In 2015, researchers found Australopithecus deiremida, an entirely new species living at the same time as Lucy, suggesting multiple human ancestors evolved here side by side. Why here? That's the question still puzzling evolutionary biologists and geologists alike. According to a study in Nature, and further reinforced by the Smithsonian's Human Origins program, the very forces ripping Africa apart today may have played a critical role in shaping early humans. As the Rift Valley deepened millions of years ago, it altered local climate, terrain, and access to water, creating an ecosystem of extreme variety. Dry uplands, freshwater lakes, volcanic highlands, and floodplains. These constantly changing environments may have pressured early hominins to develop bipedal walking, tool use, migration instincts, and cognitive flexibility. Even the lakes formed along the rift likely served as climate indicators. They swelled and vanished with shifts in rainfall, forcing early humans to move, adapt, and innovate. This environmental volatility, caused by the same tectonic mechanisms cracking the land open today, might have triggered the mental and physical evolution that made us human. But here's the wild twist. Some scientists, like those from Arizona State University and the Leakey Foundation, argue that if the rift hadn't formed, humans as we know them might never have existed. In other words, the creation of a new ocean here is not just geology in action, it's a return to a place where Earth last rewrote its future. Only this time, it's not evolving a species, it's evolving a continent. What are the odds that the place tearing itself apart today is the very same place that brought us together in the first place? Maybe the Earth isn't just reshaping land, it's telling the next chapter of a much older story we thought we already understood. The Great Infrastructure Gamble. Are we building on a splitting continent? While scientists marvel at the East African Rift as a geological wonder, urban planners, engineers, and governments across East Africa face a much more urgent and practical dilemma. What happens to roads, cities, pipelines, and railways when the Earth beneath them is literally tearing apart? In the last two decades, East African nations like Ethiopia, Kenya, and Tanzania have poured billions into infrastructure projects, some of them located directly on or near active fault lines of the rift system. Take Ethiopia's Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway, for example. It connects the landlocked capital to a major seaport, and parts of its track lie near zones of active rifting and volcanic activity. In Kenya, the Standard Gauge Railway, SGR, a $3.8 billion flagship project, cuts through the Rift Valley near Nakuru and Naivasha, areas that have seen deep fissures suddenly open in farmland, devouring sections of road overnight. One such fissure, over 50 feet deep, appeared in 2018 and shocked both scientists and locals. The ground literally split beneath a busy highway, forcing emergency diversions. Geologists from the University of Nairobi and the Kenya Geological Survey have warned that such events are not isolated. As the rift widens, by an estimated 2.5 centimeters per year in some regions, even more infrastructure will be put at risk, especially as population density increases in rift-adjacent cities like Arusha, Nairobi, and Addis Ababa. Entire urban zones could one day lie on opposite sides of a widening fault. And yet, despite these warnings, construction continues. Why? because no one knows when the next rupture will happen or how fast the rift will truly evolve. Some engineers are calling for tectonic resilience modeling, 
building bridges and transport systems with the assumption that the ground may shift by meters in the coming decades. Others worry that real estate developers and politicians are ignoring the science, blinded by short-term economic goals. But here's the truly fascinating and eerie part. A few ambitious thinkers believe that once the rift floods and a new ocean forms, the infrastructure we're building now may become part of the coastline of the future. That means highways and rail lines laid today could become underwater ruins or future ports. A rift too far? The coming political shockwave of a new ocean. While most conversations about the East African rift focus on the dramatic geological changes, an equally explosive transformation is brewing quietly in the background, the political redrawing of an entire region. As the Somali plate continues drifting away from the rest of the African continent, it's not just the land that's splitting, it's national borders, identities, and geopolitical stability that may be torn apart next. Let's look at the hard geography. If the rift continues to open and flood over millions of years, as most geologists agree it will, then parts of Ethiopia, Eritrea, Djibouti, and Somalia will break away to form an entirely new island continent, separated from mainland Africa by a newborn ocean, and the signs are already here. Satellite data from the European Space Agency shows some regions in the Afar Triangle are sinking by more than two centimeters a year, a staggering rate for continental crust. Coastal regions, currently hundreds of kilometers inland, may become future shorelines, and entire ecosystems and nations may become isolated from the rest of Africa. So what happens when today's landlocked nations like Ethiopia suddenly gain a coastline? or when countries like Somalia split between continental and island territories? What rights will newly formed maritime zones offer to governments that don't yet exist? According to research from the African Union Border Program and the UN Economic Commission for Africa, over 270 national border agreements on land, water, and resource rights would need to be renegotiated if the rift eventually splits the continent. That includes fishing rights, mineral access, pipeline infrastructure, and maritime security zones. And here's where the tension really begins. China, the United States, Turkey, and the UAE already have military and commercial ports in Djibouti and surrounding rift regions. If the geography changes, those military contracts and the balance of power in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden could shift dramatically. Some theorists even propose that the slow formation of a new ocean might ignite future secessionist movements, with regions demanding sovereignty as they become geographically isolated. Think about it. What happens when nature literally draws a border through your backyard? The magnetic pulse. Beneath, is Earth's core shifting under Africa's feet? As geologists closely monitor the East African Rift's slow but dramatic tear, another anomaly is quietly drawing global scientific attention, a mysterious magnetic disturbance in the Earth's core, centered beneath the very region where the new ocean is forming. Coincidence? Maybe not. For over a century, scientists have tracked something called the South Atlantic Anomaly, SAA, an area where Earth's magnetic field is unusually weak. But in recent decades, satellite data from ESA's SWARM mission has revealed something even more bizarre. A secondary anomaly is developing underneath Africa itself, especially beneath the rift zones. This magnetic dent appears to be growing and migrating westward, and nobody fully understands why. Here's where it gets strange. Earth's magnetic field is generated by molten iron currents swirling in the outer core, about 3,000 kilometers beneath our feet. When these flows change, tectonic behavior above can also shift. In 2020, geophysicists from the University of Leeds and MIT began studying the weakening field over Africa and noticed that the core's movement appeared to correlate with crustal weakening and uplift across East Africa. Some even suggest that this deep mantle disturbance is contributing to the unusual rate of rifting in the Afar Depression, essentially that the planet's inner engine is actively pulling Africa apart. Even more shocking, the last time a magnetic anomaly of this scale occurred, according to ancient volcanic records in South America, it preceded a full geomagnetic reversal where the magnetic poles flipped. That hasn't happened in over 780,000 years. Could the rift zone be one of the surface signs of something far deeper and more planet-wide? A few fringe theorists even speculate that the East African Rift is one of Earth's breathing valves, points where energy, pressure, and planetary rebalancing escape from the mantle to the surface. These theories, while not mainstream, are gaining traction as satellite magnetometers continue detecting unexplained pulses and field decay across the continent. If proven true, it means Africa isn't just the site of a new ocean. It might also be the first warning light of changes coming from Earth's core itself.
The Rift's living laboratory, species evolving in real time. While scientists marvel at tectonic shifts and volcanic ruptures in the East African Rift, biologists are making an equally jaw-dropping discovery. Life itself is evolving in response to the Rift, right now, in real time. From the lakes that lie deep inside the rift to the highlands divided by fresh fault lines, East Africa has become one of Earth's most biologically dynamic zones. Take Lake Tanganyika, for example, formed directly by the rift's stretching. It's the second deepest freshwater lake on Earth and one of the oldest. What's shocking is what's in it. The lake holds more than 350 species of cichlid fish, over 90% of which exist nowhere else on Earth. These species didn't arrive. They evolved right there, within the Rift Lake itself. Studies from the University of Basel and the Smithsonian have revealed speciation events occurring over just thousands of years, driven by the isolation and environmental pressures of shifting lake basins. It doesn't stop with fish. As tectonic activity causes valleys to sink and mountains to rise, populations of insects, reptiles, and even primates are being cut off from one another, creating natural evolutionary experiments. New genetic lineages of frogs, snakes, and birds have already been identified by researchers from the National Museums of Kenya and Oxford University, many of them in habitats only recently created by the rift's widening. In essence, the rift is acting like a biological blender, mixing old environments with new pressures and generating species at speeds once thought impossible. And here's the eerie yet beautiful part. Some of the ecosystems forming now may foreshadow what life will look like in the new ocean once it floods the rift. As saltwater eventually pours into low-lying areas like the Ofar Depression, scientists anticipate entire new marine ecosystems will emerge. Some believe the early life in the rift's volcanic hot springs and saline lakes, extremophile bacteria, thermophilic algae, may serve as genetic blueprints for organisms that will one day dominate this future ocean. The East African Rift isn't just reshaping land, it's triggering a biological reset, a region where nature, geology, and evolution collide. And just as the rift may give birth to an ocean, it may also become the cradle of entirely new forms of life, evolving alongside it. Hit subscribe and tell us what part shocks you the most. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.